Right, so we've identified some standard leading diagonals. And this makes me wonder, if I took a combination of these standard formulas, say n squared and n, maybe I did n squared plus n, I wonder if I worked at the sequence, you know, put in n equals 1, put in n equals 2, I'll get a sequence. Is the leading diagonal for that sequence the combination of the diagonal for n squared and the combination of the diagonal for n? Maybe in particular, if I wrote it out, n squared is what? 1, 3, 2, 0, 0, 0. Plus n, excuse me, which is 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. I'm wondering if I actually worked out the sequence of n squared plus n, would it give me a difference of a leading diagonal of 1 plus 1, which is 2, 3 plus 1 is 4, 2 plus 0 is 2, 0 plus 0 is 0 plus 0. That'd be magical if that worked out. Well, let's find out. Let me do the sequence for n squared plus n. Here goes. 1 squared plus 1, that's 2. 2 squared plus 2, uh, that's 6. 3 squared plus 3 is 12. 4 squared plus 4 is 20. 5 squared plus 5 is 30. 6 squared plus 6 is a 42, and I'll stop there. Let's work out this difference table. Up from 2 to 6 is up 4. 6 to 12 is up 6. Up 8, up 10, up 12. Uh, up 2, up 2, up 2, up 2, and therefore I've got zeros thereafter. So there's the leading diagonal. And lo and behold, that leading diagonal, 2, 4, 2, 0, is indeed the diagonal for n squared and the diagonal of n combined, I guess, row-wise by addition. Now, there's no reason we should believe this is true. I'm just trusting patterns for the moment. But this gives me a technique. If someone gives me a random sequence and I work out its leading diagonal, and if I can see that diagonal is some combination of these standard leading diagonals, then that will give me a candidate formula for what that sequence could be. There's no reason to believe that should be true or not. However, I have a candidate. And since I've got actual numbers, I could just test if that candidate really is working or not. I can go back and plug in some numbers, n equals 1, n equals 2, and see if I'm right. So right now, we now have a strategy for working out formulas for sequence of numbers. If we're playing the game believing in patterns, it'll give us a candidate, and then we can check if that candidate is actually right. So let me show what I mean by that. Let's do an example. I won't tell you the formula first. I'll just give you the sequence. I need to clean my board. Okay, here is a strange sequence in green. 1, 6, 15, 28, 45, 66. Can we find a formula for this? Well, let's try. Um, first thing I'm going to do is try to find its leading diagonal. 1 to 6 is up 5. Uh, 6 to 15 is up 9. Up 13. Up uh, 17. Up 21. And so on. Okay, so it's not linear. Second difference is up 4. Up 4. Up 4. Up 4. Up 4. Looking good. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And so on. So there is its leading diagonal. So my question now is, can I recognize this leading diagonal as a combination of these basic ones? Uh, my board technique is getting strange. Let me just change colors yet again. So to be very clear, I want 1, 5, 4, 0, 0 to possibly be some combination of the ones, which is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Maybe some combination of the ends, which are 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. Some combination of the n squareds which is a 1, 3, 2, 0, 0. And maybe one combination of the n cubes. Maybe I'll even need n fourths. Who knows? 1, 7, 12, 6, 0. For a moment, I'll just stop there and see if I can get anywhere. All right. Is this leading diagonal some combination of those standard ones? Well, look at the bat. This is right at the bat. The bottom row, the zeros below are fine. In fact, it's probably good to work bottom upwards because there's lots of zeros way at the bottom of these things. If you look at here at the uh, 1, 2, 3, the fourth row, we see that there's 0, 0, 0, there's a 6 here at the end for the n cubes, but I don't need a 6, I need a 0. That tells me I don't need any n cubes. If there's a formula for this that works, it must involve 1s, n's, and n squareds. So my, all my bottom rows are now fine up to, the, uh, up to this uh, 4 level. Well, let's look at this 4 level. This 4 level is meant to be some combination of the 1s, which are the 4 level 0, 0 for n's, and 2. I'm going to need 2 of these n squareds. If I use 2 of these n squareds, that gives me 2 2's is 4, and that's fine. Now let's look at this 5. This 5 has to be a combination of 0, 1, and there's 3, but watch out, I've got 3, I've got 6 of them now. 2 3's is 6. But I don't want 6, I want 5, which means I probably want to subtract one of this one here, so I want negative 1 of these guys. 6 take away 1 is 5, I haven't ruined it down here, still got 4, take away 0, it's still 4, my 5 is now good. At the very top level, 
I want this one to be a combination of one and what I've done to the previous ones here. I've got two times one, two n cubed, minus n, n squared, sorry, two minus n, two times one minus one is one. I don't need any of these, zero of those guys. So it looks like the combination I'm going to get is 2n squared minus n. Now, I haven't proven anything, but I now have a candidate for the sequence. And we can check if we're right. Put in n equals 1. 2 times 1 squared minus 1 is indeed 1. Put in n equals 2. 2 times uh, 4 is 8 minus 2 is indeed 6. Put in n equals 3. 2 times 3 uh, is 3 squared is 18 minus 3 is 15. Put in n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's what n equals 6. 2 times 36, uh, 72 minus 6 is 66. So although we had no proof, we now know we're right. At least we can check the, the numbers that were given to us. So if we're going to trust this pattern keeps going, then this is a formula that fits the pattern. Beautiful. So what you need to do now is work through the text of this lesson, pencil, paper in hand, lots of practice ex exercises, and try this technique for yourself. It's amazing. You can actually come up with formulas for some very complicated sequences. It's lots of fun. Thanks.